Joseph Kossuth was one of the originators of conceptual art in the mid-1960s. And of course, we know that that will be an influential movement through the 70s and all the way up to today. What he's going to do is he pioneers the use of words in place of visual imagery of any kind and explores the relationship between ideas and images and words used to convey them. So he's trying to explore the meaning of objects. For example, his series of one and three installations in which he assembled an object, a photograph of that object, and an enlarged photographic copy of the dictionary definition of it explores those relationships directly. So he's going to be using words quite a bit. And while we've seen typography, in other words, the use of letters and words in art, for example, the cubis using it to play with the viewer or others using it uh, to get across specific messages, Kosuth is going to come in and use it a little bit differently to call our attention to defining what something is. And to that end, we're going to look at one and three chairs. Now we're looking at primarily the 1965 exhibition, but you'll see uh, some of the exhibitions get mixed here. I did that so that I can get the best possible images. The same idea applies throughout. Now in one and three chairs, Kusseth represents one chair three ways. As a manufactured chair, as a photograph, as a copy, copy of a dictionary entry, for the word chair. The installation is thus composed of an object and image and words. Why? What is he trying to do? Well, he's trying to determine, or trying to get us to think about, the best way to represent an object. Artistically, we would typically say that, say, a painting might be the best way to depict an object, second only to sculpture, which of course creates a three-dimensional image. But is that really the best way? Let's explore, well, for lack of a better term, chairness. Now, we could look at the definition of a chair in terms of a dictionary definition. This helps a lot of people. It would help if I'm using it in a literary sense. It might help if I'm blind and I don't have visual input as to what a chair really looks like. There's a lot of possibilities where this would be the best definition, but it also adds to the definition of the chair. Even if I can see what a chair is, I may not be able to really describe it. So understanding the literary definition may help me better understand what truly is a chair. We can also look at the chair itself. Now, keep in mind, this is in a museum, so there's some limitations. You don't get to sit in it. You get to see it. And as such, is it really the best definition of a chair? After all, it's one example of a chair, but it doesn't fulfill the requirement of defining all chairs. It doesn't look anything like a lazy boy recliner, for example. It has a back and a seat and four legs. Well, lots of things have back seats and four legs. My dog has a back, a seat, sort of, and four legs, but he isn't a chair. And when he is, he yelps really loudly. So, again, that idea of how do we define objects? How do we define a thing? This is all about thought process. None of this is intended for sale. And then we have the photograph of the chair. Now, the photograph might be more useful than the chair itself, especially in a setting like a museum where we can't really approach the object. Is the photograph any better or worse than the physical chair? Does the photograph define the chair in a better way? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe the photograph is simply look at, looking at things differently. And the fact that the photograph is exactly the same view that the viewer has of the chair next to it, well, that really gets us to question, what's better to define a chair? What is a chair? You see, we're getting down a rabbit hole here. So. Kusseth isn't making the chair, he isn't taking the photograph or writing the definition. He's selecting and assembling them together. But this raises the question, is it art? And which representation of the chair is actually accurate? 
And to the question of, is it art? I would argue, yes, it's starting a conversation based on the conceptual definition of art. It is art. It is getting us thinking. Now, by some other people's definitions, it might not be. And that's perfectly fine. That's part of the conversation. These open-ended questions are exactly what the artists want us to think about when he said that art is making meaning. And we see that here. By assembling these three alternative representations, Kusseth turns a simple wooden chair into an object of debate and even an object of consternation and a platform for exploring new meanings. And he doesn't go far enough here. In fact, he goes further because what he does is he takes the original picture, chair, and definition and then he adds to them from the museum catalog the passage talking about the exhibit as well as a picture of all three together and so we have this second tier of picture and definition again getting us to question which one really represents the exhibition and then he does it again with another picture and another definition again drawn from the exhibition catalog and you could imagine this going on and on and on, becoming meta, sort of a, the artist having a conversation about the art and the artist as it goes on. You could imagine showing up to the exhibition one day and it's just the picture, the chair, and the definition. The next day, you show up and it's been expanded. And it again develops that conversation. Not only what is a chair, but what is an exhibition? What defines a piece of art? And if your head hurts right now, that's fine. That's kind of the idea behind conceptual art, that we're going to present you with a lot of different ideas and get you really thinking about what you're looking at.